Uh, hello. It's been a long time since I've been on camera. Hi, everybody. My name is Hope Chapman. Uh, you may know me online as Jesu Otaku or J.O., perhaps. Uh, you may know me from uh, a couple years ago. I used to do a bunch of um, anime review videos online, and I had uh, a little bit of a, a following off of that. Maybe now you know me from my horribly obnoxious escapades on Twitter or... Uh, uh, the work that I do for Anime News Network uh, today, the written work. And um, <clears throat> I'm here to talk to you about why I haven't been on camera for a long time and uh, an important, important life change that took place last year that uh, you need to know about now. And so uh, you may wonder why I'm dressed like this, actually. Uh, you might not. You might be like, hey, that's a nice jacket. <laughs> Or something, but um, but if you've seen me on camera a lot back in 2010 or something when I look very different, this may be a little um, unusual, and I'm about to explain why that is. Um, so for most of my adult life, ever since I was about 16 or 17 or so, which would be coming up on it's a little less than a decade, I have been uh, I've had a condition that uh, I didn't know what it was or how to deal with it. And um, so I just sort of buried it and kept it hidden from the world. So before before you knew me as Jesu Otaku and before any of that stuff, really, um, I was still living with this. And uh, what it is or what what, uh, what I, my reality day in, day out was, um, well, uh, if, if you've seen me, you know what I look like. You know I'm very small. I'm a very skinny bitch. And uh, the reason for this is um, not particularly because I eat healthy, because I don't <laughs> at all, um, but because I had a thing, an issue, where I couldn't eat very well, couldn't eat properly. Uh, basically, if, you know when you, um, when you smell something that really stinks or when you, uh, I don't know, when you literally choke on food and your, and your throat goes, <clears throat> like, it, <clears throat> you know, like that? Um, that would happen to me basically every meal, every day, with rare exception. If I was starving, then maybe it wouldn't be there. But if I was just hungry and I needed to eat, and I needed to eat three meals a day, which I almost never got to, that would kick in. And uh, it didn't mean I didn't like the food. It didn't mean I didn't want to eat it, because I did. Um, but uh, I had this issue where every time I tried to eat, my throat would close up. I, the way I would describe it is my throat closing up. I would gag. And I wouldn't be able to swallow it. And um, if I pushed past it, I might make myself vomit and I would start to have a panic attack. And so I couldn't do that. So I would just bide with eating whatever my terrible throat and body and, and, body and stomach allowed me to put in my face and uh, just being very emaciated. Uh, and that was my life. And uh, on top of that, I had a lot of trouble keeping a sleep schedule. I, um, uh, when I was very much younger, when I was kind of a youngish kid, I had a lot of social anxiety like a lot of social anxiety, and, um, sorry, there's somebody outside and I'm just, uh, I'll get back to the point. Um, I had a lot of social anxiety, and uh, over time that sort of went away because I was naturally very extroverted, and uh, I wanted to be around people, and so, so I did, and when I started to meet people that kind of treated me better, everybody's terrible in middle school, and I had some friends that treated me very poorly, and and uh, when I got into stuff that I loved and found other people who loved it and stuff like that, then that, that anxiety kind of went away. But what happened instead was my sleep schedule went bazonkers. I um, became unable to stay awake for a full day. And part of that was also the eating thing. Part of that was not having enough calories in my system to function for an entire day. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. And uh, so, but I would be up all night and sleep all day. And uh, this became a real problem. It was, it, it was part of the thing that uh, led to my uh, drop out of college. It was, um, you know, it was, it was uh, all sorts of bad stuff. It was inconvenient to the people who love me. And, um, you know, even when I was out of college, like uh, I would be uh, living with others, with friends, or with, uh, you know, significant others and stuff like that. And it would be a real inconvenience. And um, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know how to fix it. Because if I tried to force fix my sleep schedule, it would eventually slip back into that. And um, it was it was tricky. I was very anxious, but I wasn't depressed. I knew I didn't have depression because I read a lot about it, and I knew that that wasn't what this was. I was, you know, it was uh, I, my other symptoms were very different. I just knew that I couldn't eat and I couldn't sleep right. And what what do you do? Well, um, 
Last year, I figured out why. And it has been a long process of uh, not being able to tell why. I thought different things would fix whatever was wrong with me, whatever was wrong with my body and brain. Like, different life events would fix it, like going to college and then dropping out of college, um, joining Tigwatig, and then uh, dropping uh, Tigwatig, uh, quitting, actually, but uh, quitting Tigwatig, and all this stuff, I thought, like, will this be it? Is this the thing I needed? Was this, a, like, too much of a stressor? Was this an issue? Was this, you know, a challenge that I needed to become uh, an adult or something? I don't know. It was just the weird, dumb things your brain does to try and explain it. And um, <clears throat> it never was, and I always knew it wasn't within a week uh, or a couple days, even, of the thing happening. Uh, you know, it wasn't enough to fix whatever was wrong with me, and uh, and I just couldn't put pa push past it like a brick wall. It wasn't uh, something that I had control over. So anyway, let's move on to something lighter, uh, figuring out what the actual problem was. So last year, um, just for the hell of it, because I was having a lot of emotions and feelings and thoughts that had haunted me for years uh, since I was a child, and I tried to finally saying a phrase that, just, just for the heck of it, just to see how it would feel, because I'd never said it out loud before, I'd never really, like, con congealed it into a thing. June-ish of last year, I was out for a walk, and I, uh, for the hell of it, tried saying out loud, I'm a man. And as soon as I said that, it felt like I had been wearing, like, an ox's yoke. If you've seen Oregon Trail, a little, you know, you've died of dysentery and, um, you know, little oxes, and it was like I was wearing one of those, and it just flew off, and it spun up into the air like a horrible Bethesda glitch, and went into the sky, and it was gone, and, uh, that was what happened, and it was like, huh? Oh, okay, um, well, let's try that again, and so I cut my hair short, and I started seeing a therapist about, uh, gender issues, and about all sorts of other issues in my life, and, you know, childhood, and blah, 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 and uh, talked over a lot with my uh, with my partner, my loving partner Zach. And um, yeah, so it turns out I'm a man. I am transgender. I suffer from gender dysphoria, and that's what the eating and sleeping thing was. Uh, even before getting therapy and cutting my hair short, the the day that I confessed that to uh, myself and my partner and worked through those feelings, I was able to eat like a fucking horse. Um, I just, you know, like, and it was like, hey, my throat isn't being a huge asshole anymore. And that wasn't permanent, but it was uh, major, and it's never really been as bad as it was before coming out. And so uh, from there, it was just working through the process of, co okay, I'm transgender, what do I do? And, uh, you know, and that was last year. That was my, that was my year last year. It was just months and months of, like, uh, figuring out what really makes me comfortable. I never really thought about um, things that I need or want on a fundamental level. I think I based a lot of what I needed and wanted on the perceptions of others and the culture of others around me and stuff like that. And I wasn't, I always kind of thought I was my own person and I still think I am my own person, but I never, you don't really, you don't jump in your head very often and go like, well, what if you're a dude? Because I don't know, you just don't do that very often, but, and, and it helped to know that it was a thing. I learned what transgenderism was a couple of years ago, fairly recently for, uh, for, you know, a lot of, uh, Tumblr teens learn, learn about it much younger than I did, uh, which was my early twenties was when I learned what this really was and how it's treated and stuff. <clears throat> it took a couple of years for me to realize that, that was me. And, uh, but it was, you know, it's always the case when I was, uh, so when I was uh, two or three, young enough that I cannot remember it, and I only know the story because my parents told me the story, but uh, they said that I went to a, like, Bible camp or something, some sort of campy thing, because I came back with a shirt, it was like a tiny shirt that has everybody signed on it, and uh, it's signed to Jack, and so apparently at that Bible camp, I told everybody that my name was Jack, not Hope. Hmm. <laughs> Gee, is that a red flag? I don't know. And, um, you know, there's all sort of, I'm not going to list stories for you, but it was, it, it was a series of, you know, things that I just kind of put away or put in a box because I thought it wasn't, uh, you know, I didn't think it was, um, I don't, you just don't think of it as a thing that can, that can be you necessarily until you realize that it is and that everything in your life has been wrong because of it. And so here I am. Uh, so I'm transgender. I'm going to be, the reason I am telling you all this is both because you need to know it because it is very much a real thing that is, I, you know, successfully, you know, kind of worked out my feelings about it and I'm going to be transitioning. And um, 
also because, uh, yeah, I'm going to be starting hormones fairly soon, within a couple months, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm going to be starting uh, testosterone, starting hormones, so to fully become a uh, man to the rest of the world. I already know I am, you know, inside, and for the matter, this is just sort of a matter of outsides matching insides and kind of achieving a nice equilibrium. You know, kind of like um, when you have a fever and you need your temperature to like match. It's homeo whatever. There's a word for it. Um, you know, when you you need the inner temperature to match the outside or whatever. It's where, so everything becomes cool, and that's you know a transition kind of helps you do uh, among many many other things. <clears throat> so that's my life now. Um, uh, my name is Jacob Hope Chapman because I wasn't going to take Jack, but I do like the J. I, I always like that J sound, and I feel like for go, taking uh, people from calling me J all online, which you can still totally call me, by the way. Um, it's fine. I don't mind at all. And <clears throat> to uh, Jake, there's not really such a big jump. So I'm uh, Jacob Hope Chapman, and it's very nice to meet you, and thank you very much to uh, everybody that has uh, supported me um, through all these years, and... Um, feeling dysphoria, not knowing what it was, and, you know, eventually coming to a happy enough, a stable enough life where I could actually figure out what was really wrong with me, and, um, yeah, I, uh, my name's Jacob Hope Chapman, I'm very, I'm, I'm a much happier man than I have ever been in my life, uh, so far, and, uh, thank you for listening, and I'm not gonna cry, I'm just gonna turn the camera off, um, but thank you, and, uh,